Hey guys, uh, in this video, I'm just going to teach you about conditional statements in Python programming. So I'll explain what is conditional statements, what are the types of conditional statements are available in Python programming, how to bring, how to use these conditional statements in your programming. All these things we are going to learn in this. First, I'll start with the introduction of condition. What is condition? So condition is nothing but some situation in which we have to take a decision. So here I have, a, I have taken an example like whether you are eligible to apply for a driving license or not. So what is the condition over here? If your age is greater than or equal to 18, you are eligible to apply for a driving license. If not, you are not eligible. So this is the condition I am just taken for an example. So I am going to use these uh, condition in the upcoming programs. Okay. So this in this case, we have to take the decision whether it is eligible or not. Okay, so this is what called condition. So next we are going to learn about algorithm. So algorithm is nothing but step by step procedure which is used to write a program. Okay, so as a programmer we have, you have given a, a problem like a prepare a game. Okay, so for, for that what you will do you have to analyze your problem means how to start, where to start, what are the things I needed. What are the things I should get from the user? All these things you have to decide. Then you will go about how to solving this, how to create a game. Okay. So in this case, after analyzing your problem to get a solution, you will write all these procedures as a step by step. So that is what called algorithm. By writing the algorithm, we will get better understanding of the problem and its solution too. Okay. So here I have taken uh, algorithm to apply for a driving license okay so here I just given us a paragraph but actually when you're writing the algorithm you have to write it step one step two step three as one by one okay so the first step is input your age okay so we have to get the input from the user to check whether they are eligible or not step two if the age is greater than 18 then the candidate is eligible they can apply for a driving license third step if it is less than 18, you are not eligible. So you have to tell the candidate that you are not eligible because your age is less than 18. So this is what the algorithm. We have to write this as step by step. Step 1, step 2, step 3, one by one. Okay. So this is what called algorithm. Next we are going to learn about flowchart. Flowchart is nothing but pictorial representation of the procedure. Okay. We have learned algorithm and we have written the algorithm. Okay. So once you finish the algorithm, you have to start doing the flowchart. Okay. So instead of reading the whole procedure, flowchart give you a full understanding by a single site because it's a picture. Always picture will give more understanding, better understanding than the text. So we are going to use flowchart for a pictorial representation. Okay, so now the same thing I've taken whether you can apply for a driving license that example I've taken even to describe the flowchart. So, so here is the example of flowchart. Always flowchart uh, boxes have some rules like for this option we have to use particular box in that way. So for starting and ending we have to uh, use only the oval shape and for checking the condition we have to use the diamond shape to get the input and output we have to use this parallelogram all these things are there okay so now i'm just starting with begin then enter your age for driving license okay so here the input is age so that's why we have given this within the parallelogram then it is coming to the condition part if it is true if the condition is yes you will be printed as you can take driving license if not it will be taken it will be given as you, will, you cannot take driving license. So whatever it is, whether it is S or no, it will come to the end. Okay. So what is the speciality of this condition? Here, in the case of yes, the no part will not at all work. In the case of no, the yes part will not at all work. Okay. So this is breaking the sequence of a program. Okay. So that's what we are going to learn. The next one control statements okay so usually if you take a program your program will run step by step first line then second line then third line it will go on sequentially but when you use control statements you can skip a part of a program or you can repeat the same set of program for a few minutes for a few seconds for a few steps that is based on the condition so this is the use of control statements it is used to control 
the execution of a program okay next we are going to learn what are the types of control structures are available okay first one sequential statement so as i said in the beginning normal uh, sequential program step by step program first line will be executed then the second line will be executed then the th third line will be executed so it will go on like that so that is sequential statement the second one is conditional statement so in this case only we are going to skip a particular part of a program based on the condition okay so when the condition is true a part will work when the condition is false the another part will work so this is conditional statement next we have iterative statements iterative statements are used to repeat a particular part of a program a particular set of the program until the condition is true or until the condition is false so that is based on the condition which you are using in a program okay so these are the three types of control structures sequential structures conditional structures and iterative structure okay now we are moving on to conditional statements in python okay so sequential statements already we know so far whatever programs we have written all those are sequential statements only next we are going to learn about conditional statements we have three types of conditional statements in python first one is if statement we can also call this as simple if second one if else statement third one if lf else okay first one simple if which has only the true part here we have true part and false part and in the third condition we have so many conditions okay now let me explain all these things one by one with the examples first one simple if statement simple if statement as i said it has only the true part we are going to check a condition when the condition is true it will do some work if the condition is false it will not at all do any work simply it will come out from the program or the next statement whichever you are giving after the true statement will get executed okay so syntax syntax already i told you syntax is nothing but a format in which we are going to write our particular part of a program okay so here the syntax starts with if condition colon colon is very very important if you have not given the colon your program will not work then we have statements okay so now now i'll show you a um, flow chart to explain this particular if statement okay so the flow is coming it is checking for the condition when the condition is true it is going and doing a set of statements and it is coming to the next set of statements but in case of the condition is false there is no statements are given here therefore it will come to the next set of statements okay so this is what simple if now i'll give an example for this an example program to explain how this simple if statement is working example of for if statement so here i have taken num as a variable it's a integer value i'm just going to collect input from the user so i'm just using input function enter a number this will be printed on the screen now this value i mean the number which we are, which the user is entering will be stored in num okay if num percentage 5 is equal to 0 here i am just using percentage you know the difference between slash division symbol and this percentage modulus symbol right division symbol will give you the quotient modulus symbol will you give you the remainder so i am just dividing the given number by the user by 5 equal to i am just checking whether the remainder is 0 or not if the remainder is 0 i'll print as number is divisible by 5 okay if the number is not zero if the um, answer will become not zero then it will not do anything it will come out from the program now let me show you the output of the same program here i just used it two times enter a number i've got it first time so i've given 25 as the number is divisible by 5 it is printing as the number divisible by 5 okay next time i just given as 24 it is not giving any warning or any information to me simply it is coming out from the program okay so this is how the simple if program is working now we are moving on to if else statement here is the condition for if else statement so like um in if else statement we have two parts true part and false part so if the condition is true set of statements the true part will work when the condition is false the else part will work okay now let me show you the flow chart for this 
I am just starting with the testing condition. When the condition is true, if part, body of the if part, which is statement set 1. That will get work out and it will come to the next part. This part will not at all work. When the condition is false, body of else, which is statement set 2, will work. And it will come to the statement just below if else. Okay. So this part will not work when the false part is working. So this is how if else statement is working. Now let us go to the example. So I just used the same example which I used for if statement. So if num percentage, I mean modulus 5 is equal to 0, the number is divisible by 5. Else it will be printed as number is not divisible by 5. Okay, so now let me show you the output for this. I just added the else part in the same example, in the same previous example. Okay, I've just given the number 5, number is divisible by 5. The same 24 I've given, it just printed me number is not divisible by 5. So simply without coming out from the program or game, you are just giving the instruction to the user, to the player, like you have lost the game, or you have lost this level. So in that case, we will use this else part. Okay. So I think it will give better understanding. So now we are moving on to LF. If LF is so here what we are going to do. We are going to use so many conditions. Okay. So for example I just given two in the syntax. You can use n number of conditions over here. So if condition one. I am just checking the first condition. If the condition is true statement set one will work out. When the condition is false. That is what else part of this first if. So I'm not, I'm not going to use the full word else. I'm just going to use the word L. L if. I'm just checking second condition. I'm just giving second set of statements. So when you're going to use the third condition. L if condition 3 statement set 3. Right. So here finally else part of this particular if. So else statement set 3. Now let me show you how it is going to work out in a flowchart and make sure you are giving a colon for all these conditions and there is no punctuation marks for your statements okay so this this is what syntax here is our flowchart checking the condition one true part statement one false part condition two there is no statement in false part we are giving so condition two in false part then true part statement is working false part condition number n which means you can use n number of conditions. Okay, it will go on like that. Now let me show you an example for better understanding of this concept. So here I am just taking the variable a integer value input. Enter a number between 1 to 4 to print the name of the month. You can give up to 1 to 12. Okay, till from January to December. For time consuming, I have taken 1 to 4. So when the user is giving a particular number, I am just going to print the month of that particular number. That is what I am going to use in this program. Okay. So if A is equal to 1. When the user is giving. When the user is entering the value as 1. It will be printed as January. Okay. Else if the user is not typing 1. If the user is typing 2. In that case. We are going to consider that A may be 2. So we cannot uh, predict user will uh, enter one with this value, that value. Okay, user can enter any value. So we are going to give the condition for each and every value which the user is going to type. So this is what the second else part A is equal to 2. Then the answer will be February. Then if the user types 3, then we have to print as March. When the answer is 4, we have to print as April. Suppose if the user is printing the value which is not between 1 to 4 and she is typing um, something else. Okay. Then we have to print that as invalid number because we have given in this program as uh, type the value between 1 to 4. So you can give invalid number. Now I am just going to show you the output. Enter a number between 1 to 4 to print the name of the month which is the input we are given here. I just gave 3 for the first time. For 3, it should be printed as March. We have got it. Okay. The next time what I did, I just gave the number 10, which is not at all given or mentioned in our program. Okay. So what I have got at the, at the, as the output, it is invalid number. Okay. So this is how if else, if else is working. Okay. So I think the conditional statements are clear. So this conditional statement, 
or same in all the programming languages it is not only in python it is same in all the programming languages only the punctuation marks in the syntax will vary for programming languages to programming languages if you have any doubt you can uh, put me in the comment box happy learning